peace morning. Good morning, Satnam, Satnam. This is Chantel from She Achieve Studio, and this morning, if you're joining me live or on the recording, which will be posted on YouTube channel, She Achieve Studio, this is our weekend card poll. And the weekend card poll was created to invite a sense of closure, in sen uh, invite a sense of, I guess, ending into a new beginning for the coming week. So we start this morning off with lighting some sage and a little kalimba to clear the sound frequencies. What other goodies do we have? Oh, my little Reiki pyramid with Shoku Rei. And the cards. So we can card pull. We're gonna pull some cards. And the cards this morning are a yogic path because I've been discovering, well, continuing to discover uh, the gunas. And the gunas are the three attributes of all creation and universe, according to Ayurveda. And the gunas are rajas, tamas, and sattva. And just by the sound of the word rajas, the fire element, the part of ourself that tends to be very engaged, uh, a lot of movement. It can also be stress and aggravation and irritation. Okay, so that's Rajas. Very condensed, extremely condensed. And then we have Tamas. And even just that word is like, oh, I feel so Tamasic. That's like heavy and dull. Um, lethargic okay so that's the second attribute of all creation everything in this entire universe is made up of the gunas okay and then we have sattva and even sattva sounds so so calm and clear so when we are embodying sattvic qualities and energies we are clear we are calm okay so that is the introduction <laughs> to the gunas. And that is why it corresponded with the yogic path cards because it has to do with Ayurveda yogic philosophy as well. Okay, so we're going to light the sage. Oh, with a lighter. Ah, no, 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 not with a lighter. With a match. There, earth to earth and the fire is going to unite. So as I light the sage, if you can find yourself in a very comfortable position, if possible, and bring yourself into an awareness of what qualities you are holding in this very moment or in this present moment. Is it a bit of rajas, a little bit of irritation and aggravation? Is it a little bit of tamas? Are you sensing dull and heaviness? Or are you expanding into a sense of calm and presence? Now I ask, I invite that you honor whatever guna primarily is showing up. Okay, so please remember that with She Achieves Studio and all the teachings and learnings that I share, there is no good or bad, okay? We're above, we're above that sense of good or bad. We're in this higher realm that brings us a sense of being um, in a state of Purusha versus Prakriti. And Purusha is where we are the seer. We are the knower, and Prakriti is the seen or the known. So we are not the experience, okay? Sometimes we get jumbled up. So we remove ourselves from the experience and we then become into a sense of being the observer, okay? So just invite a sense of 
observance of neutral witness as we say in warrior goddess training a neutral witness of what part of self is a little bit more dominant this morning rajasic tamasic or sattvic okay and breathe into that space breathe into it observe it we are only identifying with it from a sense of observance not as a sense of being the experience and i'd love to welcome Tiffany, namaste, my love, and Sherry, namaste, my love, sat down to you both. Thank you for joining me. This is quite a peaceful morning, and I um, am very honored to be here, and thank you for sharing your space, and to everyone, every single one of you who views this uh, weekend card poll either during the live or during the recording again which will be posted on she achieved studio youtube channel and facebook page okay so let's start with a little bit of grounding and calling in some sound frequencies with the kalimba and it might be a little out of tune but that's okay i haven't figured out how to use the tuner yet so <laughs> i'm being very sattvic with it being out of tune and focus more on the vibration and the sound that you hear. Can you remove yourself from the experience and become the observer of it? Okay, so seated, standing or lying, spine nice and long, a sense of stillness in your physical body, please. Soften the shoulders, lengthen the spine, soften the head and neck. So we bring the chin in gently, a little bit of retraction through the neck to lengthen through the occipitals, which houses that kundalini um, vibration, okay? So if we have our heads tilted back, yes, it's opening up throat and heart chakra. However, it can be um, a sense of discomfort for that kundalini energy that we want to rise, okay? So as long as you don't feel any discomfort, gently retract the chin, soften the tongue in the mouth. So I think this morning we're just gonna stay open. We're not really inviting any bandhas, any root locks at all. And we just wanna keep that channel of Shashumna open, okay? Eyes open or closed. And the hands can be in, <clears throat> let's go into Gayan Mudra. So the index fingers, are touching the thumb pads. So you can either have pad to pad like this, or you can have, if you want a little bit stronger energy, you can have the thumb pad connecting with the fingernail, okay? And the arms are down by your side, arms can be extended, spine is long, the chest is lifted because we are inviting a sense of, of power, a power within. Okay, so the heart is expanded, Manipura chakra is open, but yet the head is humbled. Okay, so we're strong, yet we're also humbled in that strength. Beautiful. And take a few deep breaths as I sage a little bit more. And take a deep breath in, into the belly. Take a deep breath out. Receive a deep breath out. Stay with your breath. Soften the jaw and feel the sweetness of the tongue. Feel the sweetness of your tongue as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Can you feel the vibration? Can you observe the vibration entering in to your space? Can you hear the sound of the kalimba? Offering a sense of sattva, a sense of sattvic energy. Stay with breath. 
this energy that we're compiling, this energy that we're creating and sustaining is going to glide you through the end of this week and into the next week. Okay. There we go. And a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Before we begin our card pull, we call upon thankfulness and gratitude for yes, thank you, uh, Faith. Thank you, yes, very blessed with this piece of the planet that I am surrounded in, trees and a abundance of life. So can we bring in, just for this moment, thankfulness and gratitude for everything that you are surrounded by without labeling it as good or bad or right or wrong? Can we be thankful for this sattvic breath, for this sattvic space? Calling an ojas, and ojas is our vitality it's our vigor it helps keep us young and it is found inside of you it is not found outside in any external influence at all so ojas is so powerful it is our vitality that we <laughs> that we have an invitation to sustain and hold the capacity of okay so breathe in the sweetness of your tongue. Breathe in the sweetness of ojas. And we call upon the four elements, the four directions and the four elements. We call upon the guardians of the galaxy this morning to guide us into our weekend card pull, to bring us into awareness and consciousness of what we truly can let go of that we have learned the lesson from, that perhaps no longer serves our today and our now. And what happens is when we're able to bring thankfulness and gratitude and lay that lesson to rest, we can learn and build upon that. So when we lay that to rest, it creates space. It creates a sense of um, etheric, spaciousness for us to move into the next week to that way we're, we're not always clinging on to the past we're not and that brings us a sense of tamas is when we are holding on to the past and we feel that dull and heaviness whereas if we go too fast too far ahead in the future we tend to bring in a sense of rajas a sense of irritation and anxiety so what we're doing every sunday essentially is meeting sattva in the middle to help guide us into the coming week and perhaps even give us some inspiration and humbling of how we can learn from the past week all of the irritations all of the heaviness all of the balance okay and that's what we're asking the guardians for this morning so can we collectively collectively take a deep breath in and pause to stay open but hold that breath let it rise up let it flow down so it's flowing down through muladhara and rising up through sarashwara and it's connecting in the middle of your heart and belly breath out Ah, beautiful. Okay, well, that was interesting. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I was just talking about Ojas. So kind of one of the counterparts to Ojas is Tejas. Okay. So, oh, and I went right to it. <clears throat> but I want to... Oh, I'm trying to remember. We got... Oh, prana, ojas, and tejas, okay? So um, just like the gunas are the three qualities and the attributes of all universe, rajas, tamas, and sattva, we also have prana, ojas, and tejas, okay? So tejas is the subtle essence of intelligence and courage, radiant and glowing, okay? So I'm going to read you a little story of what and however if this resonates with you see if you can 
guide this teaching to your past week and how it can open up into your next week. Okay, are you willing to do that? Beautiful. Good morning, Janet. Satnam. Satnam, sister. Okay, so we have Tejas. Tejas. Oh, this is just so exciting. I love talking about all this because I don't know if you've ever heard the word Ojas or Rajas or Tamas or maybe you've heard the word of Prana before. Um, it, it's, it's just so powerful and it's so ancient. I mean, these teachings have been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and how we can learn from them and and come back into our deepest true self again we're trying to separate ourselves from the experience and to become into the seer okay so purusha and prakriti okay <sighs> so letting go to open up into okay your intellect and courage glistens in your eyes you have a radiant glow to you that reflects your passion within okay and that can be also connected to the kundalini energy of abundance and and, and ojas of vitality when we grow old still owning and and embodying that vitality and that vigor for life we we shine we see the world and we shine, okay? You are on this planet for a reason and you are deeply committed to your higher purpose. And that's beautiful because, you know, as much as I truly like absolutely live with all of this, everything that I talk about, I really try to embody it in every cell, in every breath. Um, and there's some people in this world who are not resonating with that vibe. And again, it's not good, it's not bad, it's not right or wrong. You know, I'm really try to hold off on saying that my way is the highway because it, my way is the highway for me, but it may not be for other people. And how can you bring that same sense in? You know, why do we always have to have that sense of entitlement that people have to think the same way as us? Why can't we just own it for ourselves? You know, and I think that's part of what Ojas is, is that vitality and owning yourself, owning your experience, owning your observations, okay? All right, so you carry a spark of energy that uplifts those around you and are a natural born leader. As a warrior of love, you are committed to raising the vibration of this planet, even if it sparks controversy. Absolutely, not everyone has to be on the same vibe. And again, I, I'm not really sure if, if we always have to be in a sense of convincing for other people to see our way, okay? Because I feel that that brings us into a sense of expectation from the ego. And if you are aware, maybe you're not aware, we have the five obstacles of suffering that I usually talk about because it encompasses everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, a human has the ability to be in relationship with these five obstacles. And how much energy you put into these obstacles is up to you, okay? No one can take you out of it, no one can put you in it, it's your choice. So the five kleshas, we start with ignorance, and then we go into um, ego, and then from ego we go into attachment, and then from attachment we fall into uh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Repulsion or aversion. And then we go into fear. Okay? So it sort of piggybacks off one another. And if you're interested in the five obstacles of suffering, to be in relationship with them, not to go into repulsion or aversion of them, because <laughs> they're around, so we might as well be in relationship with them, right? Um, you can go into She Achieves Studio YouTube channel, and you can subscribe there if you want. Um, and there's a video about 90 minutes, a 90 minute video down, down near the bottom, I think it is. And I have like a Facebook live that I recorded talking about the clashes kind of in depth. So it's, I think it's kind of cool. So if you're interested in it, uh, go ahead and dive in there. All right. So as a warrior of love, you're committed by raising the vibration of this planet, even if it sparks controversy. So own you. Okay. 
also what we want to see in the planet, we must first see in ourselves. Shannon, Satnam, <laughs> totally, totally, I get it. <laughs> Good morning, peace morning. So what we want to see in our planet, we must see in ourselves. And that's why we do the work. That's why we continue to practice because the glaciers are going to show up. The glaciers are going to show up. And if we're not able to uh, have the capacity to hold an understanding or, or an observance of these glaciers, hence Purusha and Prakriti, okay? then we identify with these obstacles. We, we bring these obstacles into our identification, just like our driver's license, okay? And then we start living like we are the clashes when we, are, we, we can be so much more than that. But I really think it takes number one, willingness, and two, understanding and teaching and trust. Okay, to be able to be in relationship and not identify that the experiences in our life are not who we are. That's, that's Prakriti. We are the observer. We can step back and create a bridge to have space to be able to observe. So if I'm all up in your face like this, how comfortable are you like that? Probably not very comfortable, okay? So there's no space there. But when I pull back... We have space, we create a bridge to be able to reduce that identification of the clashes, okay? Or the irritations or the tamas energy, whatever you want, okay? So whatever you, whatever you wanna see in the world, see it within yourself first, okay? And I'm gonna tell you honestly, a couple of years ago, I, I did not get it. I was like, oh, that is like, if you want people to love you, love yourself. And honestly, my rajasic tendencies were just like, whatever, like that's so corny. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, it was that way. And then I learned. Then I started to become the observer and I started to be able to witness. So if you can, if you have that feeling of something is right up in your face, how can you create some sattvic energy? How can you create some some clarity and space to be able to step back and just quietly observe as if you're observing um like sometimes with client uh, lovelies in the studio uh some of the meditations that we work through is imagining the the thoughts and those upfront experiences as just clouds in the sky they're, they're just clouds in the sky like the clouds are just moving and they're beautiful. Thank you for the clouds. Thank you, clouds, for showing up and reminding us that nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent. So why attach ourselves to this impermanence when it increases the clashes? How about we pull back a little bit and see what's inside of our true selves? Okay, got it. I could go on like for hours and days and months <laughs> talking about that. Okay, so by being your highest self and committing to your truth, own it, own it. If you're unhappy, you're unhappy. Does it have to be good or bad? Is it not um, a, a space that you can step back and observe that unhappiness and then ask, what can I do to invite a little bit more sattva? Or if you're feeling really heavy and lethargic or, you know, um, sometimes that's like a cathic quality. So talking about the doshas, um, that heaviness, that tamasic, how can you invite a sense maybe of rajas, a sense of motivation to uplift from that energy? So own it wherever you're at. But it's not who you are. It's only the experience. Do you get it? Do you kind of get what I'm talking about? We're, we're not our experiences. Okay? Unless we want to be. Unless we want to be. I really try hard not to tell people what to do or how to think. This is just opening you up into a larger capacity to be able to become more curious about where you are. Okay, So by being your highest self and committing to your truth, you encourage others to do the same. What you want to see in your life, you must embrace it and embody it within yourself first 
or there's a disconnection. And, how, and if that ha happens, because it does happen, because we're humans, that's part of our experience, but how can we be in relationship with that? How can we see this incongruency and connect that space with some sattvic qualities or with ojas, whatever, whatever you like, or with love? So continuing. <sighs> okay, hang on a sec. Deep breath in. Okay, continue sharing your spark with others who have lost theirs. And that is so absolutely beautiful because when we, when we age, when we age, the ogis, the vitality and the vigor can depreciate. It can be less, okay? And you may have someone in your life that you see this as they age, they lose their vigor, their vitality. And you know, it's, it's very heartfelt and emotional to see a loved one go through this age and lose their ability of ogis. So that's why see that ogis in yourself, begin to create ogis and sattva to reduce the pull and the wear and tear of the kleshas, which can drain our ogis. And that's what She Achieves Studio is all about. To share this information so then you can digest it. Because part, something that drains ogis is when we, um, is, uh, not Ajni, um, uh, uh, oh, oh, I can't remember the name. Amy, Emma, 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 I think it is. Um, so apologies if I have that incorrect. But when we think of it as you eat something and your body's trying to digest some bad food, something that's stale or moldy or slimy, okay? And that drains ogis. So because we have the koshas, the koshas are our five layers of body. So the five layers of body, physical, emotional, energetic, uh, mental, intuitive, and spiritual and bliss, okay? So we have those layers of body. So all of those layers of body need food, okay? Not just, um, you know, not just carrots and tomatoes, okay? Not just physical food. So just imagine, though, go back to that scenario of you eating some food that is rotten, a rotten tomato, okay? Your body is going to have a very hard time digesting that and keeping any nutrients. So what happens is your body starts to digest the, the, the staleness, the, ugh, ugh, the yuckiness, okay? And then that stays with you. And that is one of the ways... There's a few other ways, but that's one of the ways that ogis becomes depreciated, okay? And then how do we aliven that ogis? Well, we, we be outside in nature. We get some sun because ajni is like the fire. It's like rajas um, or uh, pitta. It's that fire element that helps burn away that yuckiness. And then we're able to flush it out of our systems. Okay. So what happens emotionally with that? What if you digest something emotionally that is ugh, moldy and like a slimy tomato? Have you ever been there? Namaste, Olivia. Satnam, sister. Have you ever digested something that is like a rotten tomato on an emotional layer, on an emotional kosha? Okay. And then what happens, and then because you're in a sense of Purusha versus, versus Prakriti, okay, you are able to step away and observe what happens emotionally without judging it as right or wrong. Okay, remember, we're coming from a neutral witness here. Okay, so then someone might ask, well, what if I, 
what if I can't, what if I can't see it from a neutral witness? What if I'm always judging myself? What if I'm involved heavily in the clashes? Okay. What if, what if I um, identify with the clashes as who I am? Okay, well, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's when you come talk to me <laughs> and we figure it out together. <laughs> so maybe that's a sign. And how can you observe that? If you identify with that emotional rotten tomato that is depleting ojas and maybe inviting a sense of excessive tam tamas, then why not try and observe that with loving and curious? It's like, hmm, I always like to be a little bit, um, not oh, sassy, I guess. It's like, oh, wow, look, I just attached myself to that emotion. Oh, wow, I held on to that emotion all day. And that's so cool because then you can invite a sense of curiosity. But if you're not there, you know, I always say it's your choice to step in or step out. If you're not ready, you're, you're not ready. Okay, so honor where you're at. That's, that, that's, I think, the key. So then we go, let me just see what time it is. Okay, um, let me go into the energy body. Okay, so what happens when we digest heavy energy? What happens when we digest a rotten tomato energy frequency from a person, place, or thing? Can anyone relate to that? Have you ever ingested and identified with some rotten tomato energy? It's going to happen, okay? So that, again, depreciates ojas. And that's why we go into self-practice. So we can differentiate Purusha from Prakriti. Okay, we can separate. We create space. We create that nice little bridge. And then once you've created that bridge, maybe you sit with that bridge and you look at it and you're like... Yeah, I'm not sure that bridge looks a little wobbly. Yeah, I'm not ready for it. Nope, I'm going to pass. Pass, pass. And then you go on with your life, and then that bridge shows up again. And then you're like, hmm, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, then you go on with your life, da 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 da. And then that bridge shows up yet again. And you're like, you know what, sweetie? Let's go. And that bridge cannot be passed through until you are ready and never a breath before. Okay? So that's why it is so important for us to honor that we are not our experiences. We are the observer of them. Okay? All right. That was kind of heavy, kind of emotional. Ugh, been there, done that so many times. Ooh. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so now we go into what's the next? Uh, kosha, uh, mental, um, manamaya kosha. So the mental error. I'm pretty sure it's manamaya kosha. I get them all mixed up. Um, so the mental body, the intuitive body, the wisdom body, the knowing body. Okay, so what happens when you have that rotten tomato? In your mind, ooh, 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 I know, I know, pick me, pick me. Okay, guess what? In Warrior Goddess training and in maybe many other teachings and ancient wisdoms, it's called self limiting beliefs and agreements. Okay, so those, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't know, in my life, I've identified myself with the agreements that I have. Um, uh, accepted unconscious and conscious. We talk a lot in warrior goddess training about that. And speaking of, um, please go onto the website, sheachievestudio.com. Get into the email collective because I'm only going to be promoting, um, some really cool spiritual synergy only on the email list. Okay. Not, and you can't find it anywhere else. 
Okay, so go there. And then there's also some meditations as well. There's a blog. I'm just trying to figure out the blogging and then just to share the message of love. Okay, so check it out. So when you have those self-limiting beliefs and you identify with them, prep gritty, then, well, then what happens? Okay. You got to figure it out. Create that bridge when you're ready. Start to create that bridge. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't make that bridge right away. Maybe that bridge is not like right there. Maybe you have to gather the materials for that bridge. And one thing that I have learned from not only um, training into the Akashic Records, which I will be honoring and offering very uh, high level sacred space in the studio with Akashic Records this fall, along with shamanic drumming with intent and Kundalini. But one thing I've learned with Kundalini is, um, especially the Kriya, Soba Kriya, huge, is um, not only discipline, but you can learn something, but unless you have the capacity to hold on to that something, sometimes we lose it. So if you go back and look in your life and think, hmm, this, this worked out so good for me. This was like so awesome. And then it was gone. So maybe it's not that, because if we identify with that, then that's Prakriti. And we're not Prakriti. We are Purusha. We are the observer. Well, ideally, we want to get there to be the observer. So maybe that thing that was so amazing disappears and you're like, but I want it back. Not confusing it for a klesha of attachment, however, okay? So you look at that and maybe it's because the intent was there, but the capacity to hold that intent was not readily available. And I've learned that with Kundalini Kriyas. That's why I want to share it in studio and private, a private Kundalini um, practice. Wow, can be so powerful. So think about the capacity at which you... Um, that, that you take on maybe that rotten tomato. It, maybe you have a larger capacity to hold on to that rotten tomato in your mind, the agreements, than you have the capacity to hold on to, let's say, a sattvic quality, okay? Or ojas, okay? Crystal, satnam sister. Thousand kisses to you all. Okay, so then we go into the last kosha, the bliss kosha. So I like to call it um, the spiritual kosha as well. And <clears throat> just think, if you've got those slimy rotten tomatoes in your food body that depreciates ojas and that brings a sense of tamas, then it's going to be super challenging for you to climb up that ladder of the other koshas, just like the chakras. If one of the lower chakras is deficient or excessive, it's going to be either pulling or pushing away, okay? And then that, that freedom coming up the kundalini uh, rise is blocked, okay? Like, it, it's, it totally makes sense. It makes sense to me. It, it's like a hose, okay, a garden hose, if you turn the hose on and then you kink that hose, well, there's, it's, it's going to get congested. It's going to be constipated. Okay. So what happens when we become constipated spiritually with those rotten tomatoes? Well, where does it stem from? It stems from the, the food body, the heavier. It stems from muladhara. Okay. And that's why ojas can be very deficient as we age because we lose track of that, that energetic freedom that is available to us. So in closing, that is why it is an invitation to become into a sense of Purusha and not over identify with Prakriti. Because Prakriti is the experience, Purusha is the observer, the seer. So Prakriti's the scene, Purusha's the seer. And how we do that is to create space. How also you do it, you want to know what else? I'm going to give you like a really big hint here, okay? 
So I'm just gonna light some sage first to close our space. So how do you create that bridge and gather the materials to hold the capacity for Ojas to and Sattva, okay? And Kundalini, you subscribe to She Achieves Studio email collective. <laughs> Okay, it's true. Because everything I just talked about answered that question. So I don't think I have to repeat myself. The one thing about the email collective is um, I want to surround myself with like-minded individuals. Okay, that's, that's my choice. So if that's your choice as well, join in. Because again, there's going to be some really cool offerings that have not even yet manifested that are only going to be available to the people on the email collective. Now... I think the difference with this email collective is it's not a generated email that is just like pre-made. I make it with a sacred intent. So when that email comes out to you, it is me having a conversation with you and you having a conversation with me. Okay, so it's pretty sacred. All right, kiddos, thank you so much. We're going to close our space and remember that our card today, which fits so well with Ojas, was Tejas. Yay, Tejas and Ojas and Prana and the Koshas and the Doshas and the Kleshas. All right. So bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. A mm, little bit of energetic purging there. Hands to heart center, elbows out. And we close our space and we thank the guardians of the galaxy, the elements, the directions, the animals, the plants, the stones, uh, all of it. The ancient elders, the ancestors, Mother Earth to Father Sky and all in between. And please join me with an inhale of Sat and an exhale of Nam three times. So gentle breath in and gentle breath out first. Inhale to Sat. Sat. Nam. Inhale. Sat. Nam. And last one. Sat. Nam. We are truly blessed to be held in this space with grace together. I say namaste. Peace out. <laughs> oh, the, I love you all. I guess the kalimba wanted to say goodbye to you. The kalimba is like, ah, I want in, I want in. And that's part of animism. That's part of shamanic um, intent is animism. Everything is alive. So thank you for sharing your aliveness with mine. This has been a great talk. Please watch the recorded video. If you missed some of it, we talked about ojas, doshas, kleshas, the gunas, agreements, slimy rotten tomatoes, <laughs> and I hope that it brings you where you need to be in your moment now. I say namaste. Bye. Check out the website. Go there now. Get on the email. I love you all. Peace out. <laughs>